Yeah, I'm making a lot of videos today. My day off. I think I'll kind of do something constructive, you know. But one of the things that um, well, first of all, this my my this this page that I have up is strictly for men. It it is not for anyone else. For brothers, all right. I, I don't speak to anyone else. Uh, it's not for black women. You, black woman, your 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 plight or whatever your interest does not concern me. I see nothing in which I can speak of you guys in good light. Simple as that. Right. All I can say is continue giving yourself good titles. You know. But anyway, this page is for men, brothers, all right, and for me to express myself and do my little, do my venting, to vent and express myself. That's what this page is for. And so it's not for everyone, right? And uh, what I get a lot, you know, I get response. People email me, you know. You should speak in this and speak in that. You should talk about slavery. You want to know about slavery? Like, look, man. I don't, I don't care about slavery. Slavery. You know what I think about slavery? I think, personally, that if... I think the whole slavery narrative is 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 a way to go about learning. It's, it's learned helplessness. From a historical perspective, you know, blame become to become a victim. In other words, and um, I really don't care. My position with slavery is, after 10, 15, 20 years, if you're still in slavery, say okay, say after twenty five, say after fifty years, if you're in slavery after fifty years, after fifty years you just volunteer. If you're not fighting to tear shit down and tear shit apart, then you're just volunteering. All right? So that's my position on it. And a lot of people was fighting. Like, you know, I remember I was a kid visiting um, an area where the brothers were fighting and they led the British to a certain ravine and was cutting them down. They were cutting them down. You know? So brothers were fighting. So, you know, yeah, brothers were fighting while black women was up in master's quarter. It's simple as that. But the sisters in the islands were fighting too. And I think the reason why they were fighting because they had no choice. It's a small country. Right? So everybody know if you're a coward or not. You know? You couldn't just hide and do this. Everybody would know. You know? And they'd mark you. Say, okay, that's a traitor there. But this country is so big, so you can get away with shit for a long time. That's why the internet is so good because... Um, all the truth is coming out now. And people are not mad because of the truth. They're mad the fact of the fact that the truth is being told. Let that be. And that's the understand. Let that be said that the truth is being told. And that's why a lot of people are upset. Because if it was a lie, they, wouldn't, they would say you're lying. Right? But because it's the truth, they're upset. The truth hurts. You know? But anyway... Um, the truth of the matter is, as a as a black man in this reality, we don't owe anybody anything. We don't have to stand for anything. That's why I speak on a wide range of subjects because I don't have a horse in the fight. I don't have a horse in the game. I really don't care one way or the other. If an alien should come down right now and decide they're going to invade and take this planet over and kill everything in 10 hours... I'd, the first few hours, I'd play some reggae. The second couple hours, I'd, I'd, I'd play some miles. And I'd end it with some Mozart or something. Last hour, I'd, no, I wouldn't end it with some Mozart. It would have to be some, some fail or some shit. You know? I really wouldn't care. I really don't care. I, I'm totally a free man. That's what, because I, it, it is so great to feel freedom. You have no responsibility to anyone or anything. 
That's how, brother, that's how we are now, brothers. We have no responsibility to anyone. We don't have to answer to anybody. Yes, we don't have to answer to anyone. Know the truth, and the truth will make you free. We don't have no guilt. We don't have to worry about no hell or no heaven, because we know none of that exists anyway. The only hell or heaven is right here on earth. And so, understanding that, I understand what true freedom is. You know, I don't have allegiance to anyone because as a, as a brother in this planet, we know that the whole system is turned upside down. It's like an upside down reality we're in. It's totally against us. So the thing about, and it's totally against men, but especially brothers, right? So understanding that, the blessing that I get from that, what I take from that is, it's a blessing in disguise. Because it removes any kind of hesitation on our part. It removes any kind of guilt or hesitation on our part to embrace our freedom and liberation. If you know what I mean. We don't have to owe anybody anything. We don't have to answer to anyone. We don't owe anyone anything. If anything, they should be pay paying us rent. Because we're the first one here. You know, so that's that's just my take on, on this whole thing about you should, you know, you should watch what you say to who? Who do we who do we owe anything to? <laughs> you know, it's like what? Well, total freedom is when you pierce the veil of understanding to and look around you and see how screwed up the world has become. But you know what's good about it? I didn't. I wasn't a party to this. But I'm free from it because I didn't cause it. You know, living on this planet as as a black as a black man living on this planet. We don't know. We've been living here for millions and millions of years, probably millions of years, probably hundreds of millions of years before any other race got here. This place was a heaven and earth. It was in it was abundance everywhere. Because if it wasn't, other race got here, they couldn't have survived if we had destroyed this thing. That's what I mean when I say I don't know anybody a fucking thing. Don't come to me for nothing. Just fuck off. Fuck you and good night. Like Jesus said, I'm in the world, but I'm not of it. You know, don't owe anybody anything. So that that's what I what I'm taking from this. You know, here's the thing. As black men, we gotta realize that once you cut the umbilical cord of of all the sickness around you, you become totally free because you don't have to answer to anyone. You don't have to worry about anything. Death, you don't have to worry about death because you know death is a lie. It's one big taxi ride to the unknown. You know, death is just a way of saying goodbye to the light. Hello, good night. You know, we know you never die anyway. Energy don't ever die. So we don't have to, as men in this reality, we don't have nothing to worry about. You see? We can live our life in total freedom, unshackled, and free. We don't have to answer to anyone. And if you're in an environment where you have to do that, get out of it, leave, you don't. And, and, and you have to worry about karma because there ain't no such thing. Because if there was such a thing as karma, half these motherfuckers out there that is wiping and killing and doing all this stuff, they would have been gone a long time. <laughs> right? So that should tell you something right here. Divine intelligence does not care about good or bad. It's totally indifferent to that. It does not punish anyone. That's the beauty of living here. There's no punishment. This is, you know what's beauty about this planet and this reality? It's like things are moving so fast. It's like you can, the things that, especially right now, the things that are going on, it's as if you're, lear it's as if you're learning a hundred years of information in a, in, a, in a week. It's like a crumb course, you know? It's moving so fast to the point it unbalances you. It makes you crazy sometimes if you don't keep your balance about you. 
you know so I don't want to rant on about this but we we as brothers we don't owe anyone anything all right we can live as total uh, totally as free men do whatever the fuck you want to do and don't let them slave you down because they'll slave you down and guilt you down. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do that. Those are the people who want to keep you in slave, keep you on that slave plantation. They want to keep you in a mental plantation, a social plantation, a spiritual plantation. We are free from all of that. We have been unshackled. The only, the only cage that you're going to be in is the one that you put yourself in. You know, I remember this story about the that the Buddha told. And the Buddha was so interesting. You know, he was an interesting figure. The, the picture you all have of Buddha now is bullshit, all right? That's not the real picture, you know? Having pointy nose looking like Pinocchio, that's not Buddha. Because the Buddha came from the south, uh, south of India. You know the south of India, what they look like, right? Those are the Dravidians, the original... Indians, right? So, but he told a story. The Buddha told a story about, um, yeah, he used to tell a story about this king who was, um, the king was, had a great empire, right? Lots of land, everything was successful. His kingdom was great, but his kingdom was so great, he got it, he got the envy of all the other kingdoms around it, so they invaded him. Invaded him, and he was losing the war. Right, that's the story the Buddha told. And um, he started running. You see, the thing about the what I like about the Buddhist tradition. I'm not Buddhist, but I like the symbolism, especially the um, the lotus symbol that they use, because the lotus is a powerful flower. The idea behind it is because it's a transformative energy that he has because he can live and survive in the most horrid condition in a in the most horrid situation he can rise up and transform into a flower that's alchemy that's transmutation that's the good overcoming the bad you see that's turning lead into gold that's the alchemy of inner transmutation that's what the lotus represent to me. You know, that's why the Buddhists say that there is no bad situation. But I don't believe in that totally because there's some shit that are really bad. You know? But so that's that's what the idea behind the lotus is for me. It's able to transmute and change and rise above all difficulties. and transmutes one energy to a higher frequency to a higher vibration but i'm st i still have more of a christian leaning because the christian religion is is very old it's an old religion the, the the principle of it not what they have nowadays these people nowadays they ain't no christians they they're, they're not even good pagans as a matter of fact, they're in, the Christians right now, they're an embarrassment to, to even the devil himself. If you really think about it. Because they don't hold up any of the principle of Christianity. And they have grown to be cowards too. You know? And you know how I know that? It's because I've been around. I've been around Christian. I was raised in a Christian community. And these people that I see now don't represent anything of what a Christian is. So I know what I'm talking about. I was raised, I came up in, I was born in a Christian community where, where old Christians, you know the ones that really had to live it, and they take the Bible by verbatim, every word, and they're not ignorant, you know, they're not ignorant, they know what they're talking about, they're not illiterate, illiterate either, you know, but they take the verb, Bible ver, verbatim, and they live it, and I remember as a kid, um, I remember as a kid, the first, the first, um, I remember the first drought, because it's a farming community, right up in the hills in Jamaica. It's a farming community, so I remember we had a drought, 
And you know, the, if it's a farming community, it depends on the rain. The, the, the rain is essential for the growth. So they had planted, I remember my grandfather planted the field and everything, and all the people around the community had planted their field. And so what happened was they had a drought, no rain. And so the people was getting antsy and upset. So they all went to the preacher. Because we had a church, you know, you could see the church. It's right beside the road, beside the road. And, you know, you could look into it. The door's always open, window's open. You don't have to worry about your child getting molested. You could see, in it, see, the, see, in, see inside, you could see inside the church. It's open to everyone. It's where everybody go and settle their dispute. We didn't even have police. So you go to the preacher and he's, you know, impartial, you know, judge. And people iron out their differences. But I remember the drought, and people came up to that, came up to the preacher. They are like, you know, we are having a drought. We planted our stuff, and you know, the reason why, preacher man, they said, Mister Preacher Man, the reason why we think that things are so bad and we have a drought is because you did something wrong. You did something wrong to bring down this old man on us, you know, and we need for you to change it. And the preacher was like, that has nothing to do with me. They said, no, no, you have to commit it some sin. Why we have a drought? So the preacher was like, okay. So I remember, I'll never forget this. The preacher man took off his shoes and kneeled down and started praying. And he was kneeling down and praying in the church for two days no water, no food, no nothing, to the point where people started getting scared, like he might he might die. He, he's been up in the church for two days praying. And so they were like, yeah, we need to like tell him to leave. And they're like coming to preachers, like they're coming to him like, preacher, you got to stop. And they're like, no, no, no. He just kept praying. And I will never forget this. The third day, it was night. Early in the morning, the skies opened up. And it rained so goddamn much till everybody was up to their ankles and their knees in water. And now they went to him begging him to stop. Preacher, you got preacher man, you gotta stop praying. You're gonna you're gonna flood us out. That's when he stopped. So I know Christians. I know real Christianity. What you all are practice now nowadays ain't no damn Christianity. You can't fool me. So back to this Buddhist story now. Y'all can't tell me nothing about Christ. That's why I lean towards Christianity because it's a religion of the heart. You gotta have heart to do this. Talk about forgiveness and all that stuff. You gotta have heart to do that. You gotta have heart to love people, even in, in their weakest hour. You gotta have heart to to, to 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 be able to forgive them and love them and all of that. Now I don't believe in forgiveness, but love, I don't believe in that either because I'm not that strong. I don't want to be that strong. But anyway, back to the Buddha story. The man was in his, the king was invaded. His kingdom was invaded, right? So he took off running. Got in his horse and got the hell out of there. The enemy was fastly pursuing him and they was right on his heels and they were going to cut him down. He got to a fork in the road. Wanted one said, turn right, and say, turn left. But you know, as a king, is thinking strategy. The enemy always going to think I'm going right. So I'm going to go left. So he took the left turn. He took the left turn here, uh, a little ways down the road. He ran into a cul-de-sac, a cliff. So there's no way he could go. And the enemy was coming close behind. So he was like, oh, shit, I took the wrong turn. So he got off his horse, climbed down, the side, he hold on some vine, and there was some, it was some grape vine that he hold on to, so he started climbing down, but on his way down, he figured he could escape, but he couldn't because there was a tiger below him, so he's like, oh shit, I'm having a bad day, so he's like, I can't go back up, because the enemy is, is out of my heels, so he's like, oh shit, I can't, the tiger's going to eat me, so he looked up, and there was some rats gnawing on the grapevine. Rats gnawing. Talking about having a bad day, huh? Nobody's helping you out. Below, there's people fucking with you. And above you, people are just gnawing at your shit. 
and he looked over to the right and there was some grapes a bunch of grapes hanging from the vine and he reached over and grabbed those grapes and ate them and the Buddha said check this out check what the Buddha said that's why he was the Buddha how sweet it tasted That's how free we are, black man. Cause we have no, you have nobody on your side, so you can now enjoy life and see how sweet life tasted. You don't have to worry about a damn thing. You don't owe anybody anything, and and ain't nobody can do anything to you either. Ain't nobody can do anything. You know, Jesus floated on the ocean. That's the ocean representing the emotion. They come to you with all kind of emotional stuff. You just float over it. Jesus went to walk through walls, right? He was able to resonate his vibration and just go straight through it. Any kind of obstacle they put up in front of you, you can just go through it. And when they come to you with bullshit and try to shock you down, with all kind of, all kind of contentious shit, you just disappear. That's what Jesus did. They caught him up in some... Temple somewhere, he just disappeared in them. Like, now nah, I don't have to take your shit. I'm gone. I journey on a road less travel over a vast wasteland of time. I saw kingdoms, great empires, broken tabernacle, forgotten oracles. In the wilderness of the minds of men, they were slave to their grave as their illusion rise and fall like ocean waves. Don't guilt me down with your problems. Goodbye and fuck off.